Namaste. Welcome to the course on sampling. Today we will discuss some fundamental building blocks of sampling concepts. Now, first thing is what will be the distribution of mean of the samples? You have already seen in the other video that the mean of the samples will always be normal distribution approximately if it is in large numbers. Now, this statement gives an important point. What should we disregard the distribution of population? To a certain extent, the answer is yes, because population distribution can be any, but if the sample size is large enough, how large enough we will see in the course of this lecture, but if it is large enough, it will approximately follow normal distribution. Now, today we will be seeing sampling distribution of the proportion. Sampling distribution of proportion, the research in social sciences is replete with proportions. We generally represent it by P, which is population proportion of having certain characteristic. In the entire lecture, we will keep one important point in our mind. We know the population parameters and we are considering the sample statistic from the population. That means, we know the population mean and population standard deviation and then we try to find out how we can derive sample statistic from the population. This may not be the case in real world. In real world, we may not know the population parameters. We will be knowing only the sample statistic and from the sample statistic, we will be estimating the population parameters. This we will see it in the next lecture, but in this lecture, we know the population parameters. Therefore, what is the population and what is its mean and what is its standard deviation, everything we know. And from this, we derive the sample statistic. Now, sampling distribution of proportion. Let us consider a population of uh, five elements. And in this, we have two odd numbers and three even numbers. Therefore, we know about the population. Now, the population proportion of even numbers is, which we may call it as success, is equal to 3 by 5. 3 out of 5, which is 0. 0.6. Now, let us consider a sample of 3 from the population of 5 elements. Let us take the first sample. And we may get 0, 7, 6 as an example. We may not get the same, but the proportion of even numbers is 2 by 3 and denoted by p bar. Thus, p bar is the sample statistic and p is the population parameter. Now, we can draw 10 samples of size 3 from the population of 5. And p bar value of all 10 samples of 3 of even number proportions are 2 by 3, 1 by 3, 2 by 3, 2 by 3, 1, 2 by 3, 1 by 3, 2 by 3, 1 by 3, and 2 by 3. Therefore, we have obtained 10 population proportions. 3 of the 10 proportions, if you observe, you can see the second number as 1 by 3. Like that, you can find 
the probability of 1 by 3 is 3 by 10 out of 10 samples 10 sample proportions 3 sample proportions are having 1 by 3 similarly p bar is equal to 2 by 3 and p bar for just 1 is only 1 then respective probabilities are 0 0.3 0 0.6 and 0.1. For a better clarity, I will put it in a table and you can see the sample proportions and 1 by 3 is 0 0.3, 2 by 3 is 0 0.6 and 1 is 0 0.1 and all adding up to 1. We all know that probability will always add up to 1, it can never be more than 1. Now, sample distribution of proportion. If the mean and standard deviation of these 10 numbers are computed, we get 0 0.6 and 0 0.2 are obtained. Thus, the mean of all the samples is equal to 0 0.6. Now, let us go back for a second and see. You will see the mean is given as 3 by 5 and it is equal to 0 0.6. You can see clearly in the here mu p is equal to 0 0.6. Therefore, one of the important aspect is the sample means of proportion or sample proportions of all the 10 samples will always be equal to population proportion. And the sample standard deviation is given by 0 0.2. Now, the mu, p bar and symbol mu represents the mean of the distribution of p bar. Note, mu p bar is equal to 0 0.6 and population proportion p is also 0 0.6. This equality should be remembered. The population proportion and the mean of the means of all sample proportion are the same. This is the most important thing we should understand. If we take any sample randomly and we find its proportion, it will be a very good estimate of population proportion. Now, to solve the problems, we use the following formula in proportions. The population proportion is equal to p and the sample standard deviation proportion is equal to root of p q by n. Now, standard error of proportion. What do you mean by standard error of proportion or SEP? It is the standard deviation of the 10 samples we have taken and we have find the standard deviation which we call it as standard error of proportion. The symbol sigma p bar is called the standard error of proportion. Let p be any given population proportion and q is equal to 1 minus p. Then for a sample size of n for a population of size n is given by sigma p bar is equal to root of p q by n multiplied by root of n minus small n divided by n minus 1. Now, let us take a simple example. If p is equal to 0 0.6, therefore, q will be 1 minus p which is equal to 0 0.4. In the given example, we have taken 3 samples, therefore, small n is 3, that is the sample size and the population size is n is equal to 5. One very important thing we should always remember is the value of this root n by n minus small n divided by n minus 1 is known as finite population multiplier. This will be very small quantity in the case of social sciences with large samples and we may ignore the component. Thus, for the example given, sigma p dash 
will be equal to 0.6 multiplied by 0.4 divided by 3 divided, multiplied by the finite population multiplier 0 0.5 is equal to 0 0.2. Now, we can clearly understand how the sample sta error of proportion is obtained by the given formula. Now, let us take an example and work out the example, then we will be able to understand the implication of whatever we have studied so far. Now, let us imagine 60 percent of total television audience population watched a particular program on Wednesday evening. The manager would like to know what is the probability that in a random sample of 100 viewers, less than 50 percent of the sample watched the program. Now, in this problem, we know the population proportion that is 0.6 or 60 percent. We want to check the sample proportion, the random variable proportion or the total proportion of people who have viewed our entire program is equal to 0.6. Please do remember the population proportion will be equal to sample proportion. Therefore, the standard error of proportion is given by sigma p bar is equal to 0.6 multiplied by 4 divided by 100 and we take root of it. This gives us a value of 0 0.04897. Now, we remember that the finite population multiplier we disregarded and we have now calculated the standard error of proportion. Now, what should we do with this? We have calculated both these things. Now, we know that the sample size, the sample is random sample and sample is large enough to assume that it follows normal distribution. Since we have assumed, which generally will be the case in such a kind of a survey, we can definitely say that probably it follows a normal distribution. Now, the general standard normal variable is given by z equal to value of the random variable minus the mean of the random variable divided by the standard deviation of the random variable. Please remember this formula we will revisit, revisit many times in our statistical inference. The statistic p bar is our random variable that z is equal to p bar minus mu p bar divided by standard deviation p bar or sigma p bar. This formula z is equal to value of the random variable minus mean of the random variable divided by the standard deviation of the random variable we commit to our memory. Let us see how valuable this formula is. Now, this is the normal distribution. I have just drawn a graph where it is on both sides, it, the entire area represents 1. Therefore, since it is symmetrical, it is 0.5 on this side and 0.5 on left hand side and 0.5 on the right hand side. Therefore, this area is given by normal distribution. Now, the mu p dash is given by 0 0.60. Remember, if it is mu, p dash is 0 0.60, the stand, if you convert into normal distribution, it becomes 0, because 0 0.60 minus 0 0.60 divided by the standard deviation, 0 by any quantity will be 0. Therefore, the standard will be 0 and the sigma has been calculated at 0 0.04897 as we see in the last slide. Now, the population proportion is 60, the sample proportion is also 60. 
Now with this information, we try to do an analysis. The statistic in our random variable, where do I get the value minus 2.04? This you will get it by z value is equal to 0 0.50 minus 0 0.60 divided by the standard deviation as shown in the diagram. Now we would like to calculate how many people will be saying probability of how many people not seeing or probability of what, what exactly happens with the proportion which are below 50 percent. Now, how to find out this? Now, if you take the entire normal distribution, it is symmetric on both sides. Therefore, the one side it represents complete 0.5, the other side it represents complete 0.5. And we have calculated z is equal to minus 2.04. If you substitute for these values, then we will say 0.6 is the mean value. And you have to find out the sample proportion, which is 0.5, which is less than 60. Therefore, you will always get z value negative. And the z value is 2.04. Now, let us think what exactly we mean by 2.04. We will revisit this slide again after discussion for some time. Why we need to convert all the measures to standard normal variable? In most of the cases, you want to convert the values into z and then try to find out its and solve the problems. Let me take an example. If two students are asked to measure heights of all students in the class and report the results, one may take a scale and measure the heights in inches and other may use centimeters. Both will come out with a mean and standard deviation expressed in the units measured by them. Therefore, you cannot compare. Therefore, what we will do is, who is right? In order to make the measurements independent of units of measurement, we will use standard deviation measure. That means, instead of measuring in the units, we will take mean as 0 and every unit as the standard deviation. That is reason why if you, if you revisit the formula that is given here, you will see value of the random variable minus the mean of the random variable divided by the standard deviation of the random variable. Now, both units get cancelled and z will be a pure number. Therefore, whatever may be the units of measurement, you will be able to convert them into standard deviation measures and then use the data for our further analysis. And most of our research, most of our statistical estimation, you will find this formula recurring and helping us to find solutions. Now, next important thing that I would like to really see is, I would like you to appreciate is this slide. Now, where do I get 0.4793? Now, if you go to the standard normal table, which I have not given here, I want you to go to the standard normal table, which is available in most of the textbooks or even on the internet and find z value is equal to, you won't find negative values in your table. Probably you will find 2.04. For this, under 2.0 and move across and you will go to 0 0.04, you will find an area of 0.4793. That means, between 60% to 50% the entire area is occupied by 0 
if we remove from 0.5 which i have given it to you at this side 0.5 minus 0.4793 you will get 0 0.0207 therefore the probability of 0 0.0207 shows that less than 50 percent of the samples saw the program the probability of themselves not saying the program is given given by this now you can you can clearly understand how from knowing the population by having the sample statistic you will be able to find how many people are how many people are viewed how many people have not viewed all these aspects we can find out from this study i hope you understood the standard deviation and importance of sampling distributions and standard error let me reiterate statistical inference is based on the sampling distributions standard error is the standard deviation of the sample the sample mean is an estimate of the population mean the sample standard deviation is given by Sample standard deviation is equal to population standard deviation divided by root n. I have given this for the mean values. Now I want you to give your own map for proportions, which is the same. I hope you have understood enough of these areas, and there are five practice problems for you I have given with answers so that you will understand how the entire sample distributions and standard errors are dealt in sampling thank you let me summarize we started the entire lecture by an embedded truth or something like what has continued in our entire discussion is that we know the population parameters and we use sample parameter and then try to find out what exactly sampling really does in the distribution therefore we started understanding how proportions and what is the relationship between population proportion and sample proportion population mean and the sample mean we have also taken a problem in order to understand how the sample the population parameters what we have estimated what we have already got can be used for inferences therefore first thing statistical inference is based on sampling distributions therefore we always rely on sampling distributions if the sampling distributions are large enough they are generally follow normal distribution standard error is the standard deviation of the sample the sample mean is an estimation of population mean Similarly, the sample proportion is an estimation of population proportion. The sample standard deviation is given by sigma x bar is equal to sigma x divided by root n. Same case with sample standard deviation of proportions. I think you have understood the basic fundamental building block of sampling. Thank you very much.